Hi, I'm Sunita Stanislo, and welcome to my concert celebrating Jewish music. I first went to Jerusalem in the late 1980s, and it was there that I worked with folk musicians and, and fell in love with the passion of Jewish music. It's these tunes, many of them that I learned years ago, that I still perform and have really opened the door for me to being a more creative harpist. I'll start with my signature piece. It's a Ladino folk song. Ladino is a language spoken by the Jews that trace their heritage back to the Iberian Peninsula. It's called Adio Querida. Adio Querida was one of my first pieces I arranged for the folk harp. I um, love digging in with all these arpeggios and guitar-like effects. And it was really my discovery of finding musicians in Jerusalem that wanted to work with a harpist and they had the patience and, and really the desire to work with me and guided me. So I did a lot of programs with this wonderful um, Ladino storyteller and, and really she has spent her life promoting um, the language and heritage of Ladino. 
It's uh, Matilda uh, Consareno. There's another wonderful musician I worked with starting in the 80s, is Akiva Ben Horin. He's a flutist who always wanted to play with a harpist and shared with me these gorgeous melodies and would help me decide the rhythm and how to work with him. But he played with such soul and shared these pieces that became ones that I are keepers that I always want to play. tradition, but it's a traditional Bukharan melody, and I learned it first from Akiva. It's called Mi Yitnani Ot, Who Will Give Me Wings, Wings to Fly.
Another song that I first learned from Akiva is a traditional Hasidic bridal march. And it's still used in weddings and it became much more famous recently in the mini-series Unorthodox. It's the song that is sung at the very end. <clears throat> it doesn't really sound Jewish in the typical, stereotypical sense of minor and passionate. It's very major and very elegant. And so this is another side of it. And with Akiva, I played at weddings. And in Jerusalem, it seems like all the VIPs of the world come there. We played for many special occasions, honoring Elie Wiesel or playing at the president's house. It was um, an exciting time to live in Jerusalem as a musician and be really a voyeur into many, many different worlds there. So here's a traditional bridal march. Now back to the minor, more gutsy music that I love to play on the harp. I was trained classically, and there's a whole variety of classical music with dynamics and um, some passion, but a lot of it is very elegant. And for me, I felt set free when I started to dig into arranging Jewish music on the harp. And this cascaded into uh, a career of more arranging music, uh, playing with many different instruments and musicians, and, and really the source is from living in Jerusalem. Over 30 years ago, this opened the door for me. Here's a piece based on Psalm 34, and I often dedicate this to my husband, Fred, who does so much work for peace. It's uh, Mi Ha'ish, who is this man? And part of the verse is at the end, to not only seek peace, but pursue it. Mi Ha'ish is a classic Israeli song. And very, very Jewish. So I'm playing a Kamak lever harp. These levers here, or levers, change the pitch half a step. And I just realized I put it in the wrong key. It's very important that you preset your key. Or you can play the wrong, right strings in the wrong notes. <laughs> so here we go. Mi Haish.
you heard a few extra noises, that's our dog Lizzie. She loves to come and sit by me when I play the harp. So she walked in in the first piece. We thought we set her up further away, but um, you might even catch her snoring later. We'll see. But just, uh, she's out of the screen this time. There's such a deep connection <clears throat> between the harp, the history of the harp, and King David. King David is the most famous harp player in the world, and, and I love that there's this connection with, with the Psalms, with healing, and so it's um, sort of surprising in a sense to me that there wasn't this deep rooted tradition of playing the harp here in Israel since the time of King David, when I came in the 80s, it was very unusual that I played the harp. And there were classical harpists and Israel Philharmonic Orchestra is one of the finest in the world. But there wasn't this tradition of playing folk music, Jewish folk music, Arabic folk, any folk music from around here. And so it was a, a wonderful journey for me to start exploring the harp with these melodies that I just fell in love with. This next one is traditional from the Psalms, Im Eshkehech Yerushalayim, If I Forget Thee, O Jerusalem. Now there's this deep connection with Jerusalem and the harp, King David, and I was searching for an English translation for this and it's from Psalm 137. And in the New Living Translation, it says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, you know, let my tongue you know, stick to the roof of my mouth and let my right hand forget to play the harp. It's not forget its cunning, it's forget to play the harp. And the harp has this history in the ancient temples and in Jerusalem, and a deep Jerusalem connection. And I love having that connection. Here is Im Ishkehech, If I Forget Thee, O Jerusalem, very traditional version. And I recorded this on my CD, which is no longer in print, City of Gold. It was, for me, a celebration of all this music I learned in Jerusalem. And I moved back to Minnesota and performed with phenomenal musicians there. Here's Im Eshkehech. In fact, I recorded this with the, the amazing Tracy Silverman, who's an extraordinary violinist.
I was remembering as I was playing this, recording in a very special studio in Minneapolis, well, outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, Paisley Park, and that was the studio of the famous musician Prince. And I've been fortunate to live in areas with truly phenomenal musicians and resources. Back to Jewish music and harp in the Psalms, in the Bible. Psalm 150 mentions the harp. I love playing on it. The idea this, this instrument has such heritage. Hallelujah. There's a beautiful harp community here in all of Israel. I felt so nurtured by the community. I rem have memories of this very special shop in the old city of Jerusalem when I first met and knew uh, Shoshana and Micha Harari. This is one of their harps back here. And they had CDs and just this sense of magic with the instrument. There's now a harp builder up in the Galilee, and his name is Peter Azakovich with Wood Song. There's a harp store, a harp store that's really the center of the harp world now in Israel, in Tel Aviv. And I feel 
but I have grown with the heart community too. And as it began to really multiply and blossom, that more and more people are able to rent and buy and, and you know, it used to be very difficult to get a harp here. I have memories of bringing harps back one at a time from when I would visit the States or in Scotland. And I felt that we had reached critical mass. It was time not just to have the International Harp Contest in Israel, which is really the Olympics for the classical harp world. Harpists come from around the world every three years to compete. But it was time to celebrate the harp here and locally. And I convinced them to start these tradition of the Israeli Harp Festival. Now, for the very first one, I knew it was important to really bridge the gap between those that are just beginners and playing folk music and the classical harpists. So we invited Alfredo Orlando Ortiz, he's beloved by all harpists, to come and perform. But before the harp festival, he was injured and he couldn't fly. So then I thought, okay, who else can bridge this gap? And somehow I convinced Park Stickney, the brilliant jazz harpist, to come and perform and take part in the first Israeli harp festival. Park wanted to also do something with um, Palestinians or Arab musicians, and we gave him a list of options, and he selected this school outside of Nablus in the center of the West Bank and they had a program for teaching children music and had brought musicians from abroad. Now, I don't speak Arabic, and I knew that we would need a translator. I went with my husband and this organization that had helped fund this music project and met a very young, beautiful lady, Yasmin, who was in her early 20s, and she was our translator and she had never heard the harp before. And I let her try my harp and run her fingers across it. She was entranced, she wanted to play the harp. So I said, well, if you ever get a harp, of course I'll teach you, thinking she'll never get a harp. And my husband Fred said, look, it's a really supportive harp community. We should just put out the word. And within a few months, we had raised money from harpists around the world and a very special, significant contribution from Abid in England. And we purchased a harp for Yasmin, a 34 string folk harp built by Peter in the Galilee. And this for me was a whole journey of how do I teach someone who's blind to play the harp? And what is it like for me alone to drive out to the middle of the West Bank and it was the start of a long friendship and adventure, certainly for me. And Yasmin was able to join us for the second Israeli Harp Festival, and she performed. And this opened up doors for her too, meeting other people and being involved with um, Israelis and Arabs beyond her community. So I'd like to dedicate this piece to Yasmin, but also 10% of all of your contributions towards Yasmin who just gave birth a week ago to a son. This is a piece made famous by the Lebanese singer, celebrated singer, Fayrouz, Fayrouz. The piece is Yalori Habuk. It speaks of the beauty of a woman, perhaps of a country, tradition.
another song relating to beauty of women or the moon, how the moon can be deceiving. This is a Ladino folk song that I learned from Matilda in Jerusalem. Yo me enamore de un aire. <clears throat> Some of these Ladino songs and Jewish melodies I brought back with me to Minnesota after living in Israel. We came back and forth to Israel and moved here in 2000. But in Minnesota, I founded an ensemble called Vida and we played some of these Ladino folk songs and we even went to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So Jewish music has opened up so many doors and possibilities for me. One of them that I never imagined was performing with an all-women's ultra-Orthodox Jewish rock band in Jerusalem called Tofa'a. And I really think music does break down barriers between religious, secular, and also Jewish and Arab and so many boundaries are broken when we share music. I never imagined I would be playing with these Orthodox women and only to women. And I have so much joy when I play there because they play upbeat stuff with, you know, electric guitar and a full set of percussion and singing and flute. And as a harpist, I'm often in the corner playing elegant music and there I get to plug in my harp. So none of those pieces really can show the energy of Tofa'a, but in this spirit, I'll play actually a Hanukkah piece. With Tofa'a, we play for often holidays and celebrations where women get together and, and can let loose. This is a Sephardic one that's more modern. It's written by Flora Jacobi. It's Ocho Canalicas, Eight Candles. changing the key, I guess. 
again. With a smaller harp, I can fly. I can travel with this harp. And back in the days when I first came here, I actually, with my concert grand harp, was able to fly, set it in a big case on the scales. I remember once it went past the limit and they said, well, it's worth three bags. And uh, those were the days when you could fly with a lot. Long gone. So I'm really happy to play on the smaller, lighter harp, Kanak Yilis. joining me in my really walk down memory lane of some of the pieces that really have helped me become the harpist I am today, transformed how I look at arranging, how I delve into music. But I'll end with actually something a little bit more well known and traditional Yiddish lullaby. One of the most um, you know, really, really meaningful things I do here is play in a children's hospital. I was part of a study in a newborn intensive care unit, and now I work in a children's hospital. Twice a week now. Tum Balalaika. It's a lot of keys to remember here.
Thank you for joining me in my home here in Jaffa.